Hello students, the CBSC board has released a standard sample paper for mathematics almost a month back and we'll be solving all the problems given in the standard paper. Now what is the format of the standard paper? You have three parts, section A, B and C. Section A consists of 20 questions, one mark each, only 16 to be answered. B, 20, 20 questions, one mark each, again 16 to be answered. And section C, there are 10 questions wherein you have two case studies and you need to answer eight. And the most important thing is there is no negative marking. So even if you are not sure about the answer, you can choose one of the four options, right? So let's begin with section A. Now, a few questions are quite challenging, right? So out of these questions, the total number of questions are 50 right and you need to answer 40 of them so out of these uh, 50 questions 10 to 15 questions are quite challenging so you will be able to get 40 out of 40 only if you are really thorough with all the formulas all the different kinds of questions possible questions which can be asked so let's begin with section a the first question you can see the question on the screen the ratio of lcm and hcf of the least composite and the least prime number is so you have four options. So we need to find the ratio of LCM to HCF. Now, which is the least prime number? The least prime number is two, right? So this is the least prime number and we need to find the least composite number. So when we talk about a composite number, so if I talk about numbers one, two, three, four, five and so on, two is the least prime number, three is also a prime number and we are left with one and four. One is not a composite number because a composite number is one which has three factors. So one does not have three factors. So four is the least composite number. So this is an important thing which you need to remember. So the least composite number is four. So the given number two can be represented as two power one and the given number four can be represented as two power two. Now, when we talk about HCF, what is common here between both the numbers, it's going to be two power one. So HCF of two comma four is two power one. And what about the LCM? LCM is take the max. So here you have two power one, here you have two power two, the max is two power two. So it's going to be two power two, which is four. So what is the ratio? The ratio is four is to two, which is two is to one. So check out the options, it is option B. Second one, find the value of K for the lines 5x plus 7y equals 3, 15x plus 21y equals K if they coincide. Now if the lines coincide, the condition is A1 by A2 equals B1 by B2 equals C1 by C2, right? Now what is the coefficient? The coefficients are a1 is 5, A2 is 15, should be equal to B1 is 7, B2 is 21, and C1, C2. So here you have 3 by K. You can write it as minus 3 by minus K if you bring it to LHS or write it as 3 by K. It doesn't matter because the sign gets cancelled. So here the ratio is 1 by 3. Here also it is 1 by 3, right? So 3 by k is equal to 1 by 3. So what is k? k is equal to k into 1 is equal to 3 into 3 which is equal to 9. A very simple problem. So the answer is 9 which corresponds to option A. The third one, a girl walks 200 meters towards east and then 150 meters towards north. What is the distance of the girl from the starting point? A very easy problem. So let this be the starting point. The girl walks east. So this is east. The distance walked is 200 meters. So the, let this be point A and then she moves north. Distance is 150 meters. So let this be point B. So now we need to calculate OB. So how do I calculate OB by using Pythagoras theorem? So it's going to be 200 square plus 150 square. The whole root will give me OB. So now observe 200 square is nothing but 40,000 plus 150 square is going to be 22,500. So when I add both of them, we get the value as 62500. 62500. So I need to find the root of this. 
So we know that 625 is a perfect square and 100 is also a perfect square. So this can be written as 625 into 100 or this can be written as 25 square into 10 square. So take 25 and 10 outside. So that's going to be 25 into 10, which is 250 meters. So OB is equal to 250 meters, which corresponds to option B. Very simple problem. The lengths of the diagonals of a rhombus are 24 centimeter and 32 centimeter. So this is a rhombus. So I have the diagonals. So one is 24 centimeters and the other one is 32 centimeters. So we know that in case of a rhombus, let this be A, B, C, D, the diagonals of a rhombus intersect such that they are perpendicular and they also bisect each other. Right. So therefore, if this is 24, if BD is 24 centimeters, let this point of intersection be O, then BO is equal to OD equals 12 centimeters. So similarly, I have the diagonal AC, which is 32 and the diagonal AC also gets bisected. So AO is equal to OC, which is equal to 16 centimeters. So now you have a right angle triangle, BOC. Now what is OB? OB is 12 and this is 16 and I can find BC very easily. So what is BC? It's going to be root of 12 square, which is 144 plus root of 16 square, which is 256. So that's going to be root of 400, which gives me 20 centimeters. So this is 20. Now we need to find the length of the altitude of the rhombus. <clears throat> so we need to find the length of the altitude of the rhombus. So we know that area of rhombus is equal to the height into one of the sides. Now what is area of the rhombus? It's nothing but half into the product of the two diagonals. And we need to find the height, height is not known, into the side, the side is 20. So it is half into, the two diagonals are 24 into 32, which is equal to height into 20, right? So 12 are, so find out 32 into 12 divided by 20. So we get the height as equal to 19.2 centimeters. So the right option is option D. It's a very tricky problem. So you have to know the area of the rhombus only then you will be able to uh, solve this problem. So you have to remember that the area of the rhombus is given by half into product of diagonals and also remember the fact that the diagonals of the rhombus intersect in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other and they also bisect each other. Fifth one, two fair coins are tossed. What, what is the probability of getting at most one head? So when two fair co coins are tossed, we get four options that is head head, head tail, tail head and tail tail. So now the question is what is the probability of getting at most one head? At most one head means a maximum of one head or no head. So you have one head here, one head here and no heads here. So when, I, when you have at most it means that you can get a maximum of one head or no heads but you should not have two heads. So what is the probability of getting at most one head? So you have three combinations, three by four. So among all the four options, it is option A. Again, a very simple problem. Given triangle ABC is similar to triangle PQR and if AM and PN are altitude. So let, let me draw the two triangles. You have triangle ABC and AM is the altitude here and then another triangle PQR and PN is the altitude. So this is PN respectively and we have the ratios AB square is to PQ square is equal to 4 is to 9. Okay, so AB square is to PQ square is equal to 4 is to 9. So we know that the ratio of the sides of the triangles is equal to ratio of the altitudes itself. So therefore AB by PQ, so AB square by PQ square is nothing but equal to AM by PM the whole square. 
right so therefore we know that the ratio of the sides of the triangle so ratio of the sides of the triangle is equal to ratio of the altitude so now we have a b square by p q square which happens to be the ratio of the square of the sides so here also i need to take the square of am and pm so this is what we get as 4 by 9 but i need to take the square i need am by pm so i can write this as 2 by 3 the whole square so am by pm is equal to 2 is to 3 so 2 is to 3 is the answer so the right option is option d seventh one if 2 sin square beta minus cos square beta equals 2 then find beta then what is beta let me represent cos square beta in terms of sine square so i have 2 sine square beta minus cos square beta is 1 minus sine square beta right so we know that so we know that sine square beta plus cos square beta equals 1 right so we get cos square beta is 1 minus sine square beta so this is 2 sine square beta minus 1 plus sine square beta so these two can be added so we have 3 sine square beta minus 1 and that is equal to 2 here so take this minus 1 to the other side so i have 3 sine square beta equals 2 plus 1 equals 3 so 3 3 gets cancelled so sine square beta equals 1 or sine beta is equal to 1 so if sine beta is equal to 1 what is beta so beta is equal to 90 degrees so we know that sine 90 is 1 right so therefore the value of beta equals 90 degrees and the right option is option b the prime factors of the denominator of a rational number with the decimal expansion 44.123 so this can be written as 44.123 divided by 1000 right so now if i have to write, write the prime factors of the denominator so we know that the denominator has to be expressed in the form as 2 power m into 5 power n right so the prime factors are 2 and 5 only so this is option c ninth one the lines x equal to a and y equal to b are so very simple problem so let let's consider the coordinate system the x-axis and the y-axis now what is x equal to a x equal to a is a line which is parallel to the y-axis so this is a comma zero so a line parallel to the y-axis would be x equal to a so all along the line the distance would be a from the y-axis so the x distance is a similarly y equal to b is a line so if this is 0 comma b so it's going to be a line parallel to the x-axis so x equal to a will be a line parallel to the y-axis y equal to b is going to be a line parallel to the x-axis now these two lines intersect at a given point so the answer is option a which is intersecting tenth one the distance of the point minus five comma six from the origin is so very simple uh, problem so the distance is given by so let this be x1 y1 and the origin let this be x2 y2 which is zero comma zero so what is the distance x1 minus zero so minus five minus zero the whole square plus 6 minus 0 the whole square so that's going to be 25 plus 36 so we get the value as root 61 units so the option is option d 11th one if a square equals 23 by 25 then a is now what is a a is nothing but root of 23 by 5 so 25 can be written as 5 square so it's going to be root of 23 by 5 and 23 is nothing but a prime number so root of a prime number it's going to be irrational so therefore the answer is b ir irrational 12th one 
the LCM of x comma 18 equals 36 and the HCF of x comma 18 equals 2. So what is x? So we know that the product of the two numbers x into 18 is equal to the product of LCM into HCF. Right? So x into 18 is equal to 36 into 2. So this is 2's are so x is for a very simple problem option C. 13th one in a right angle triangle right angled at B. So let me draw a right angle triangle. So this is A, B and C. Tan A is root 3. So this is angle A, tan of A. So tan A equals root 3. Now tan A is opposite side by adjacent side. So this is root 3 and this is 1. Now let me find the value of AC. Now AC is nothing but root of 1 square plus root 3 square is nothing but 3. So this is going to be root 4 equal to 2. So AC is 2 units. Now we need to find cos A cos C minus sin A into sin C. Now what is cos A? Cos A is adjacent sign by hypotenuse so it is 1 by 2 into cos c is adjacent side here is root 3 so root 3 by 2 minus sin a sin a is opposite side by hypotenuse root 3 by 2 into sin c opposite side by hypotenuse 1 by 2 so both the values are the same they get cancelled the answer is 0 so this corresponds to option b another simple problem 14th one if the angles of the triangle ABC are in the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 2 respectively and the largest angle being right angled at C then we need to find the values. So again consider a right angle triangle. So this is A, B and C. This is 90 degrees. So given that the angles are in the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 2 here. right? So x plus x plus 2x is equal to 180 degrees. Now what is 2x? It is 90. So 2x plus 90 equals 180 degrees. So 2x is equal to 90. So x is equal to 45. So this is going to be 45 and this also is going to be 45 degrees. So now we need to find the values of secant a. So you have secant a minus cosecant b minus tan a divided by cot b. Okay, right. So you have secant a. So if you want, you can write the reciprocals also. So secant a is nothing but 1 by cos a and cosecant b is nothing but 1 by sin b. So I can write it as sin b divided by cos a minus tan a. Cot b is nothing but 1 by tan b right so sin b what is sine of b sine 45 degrees sine of 45 degrees is sine of 45 is 1 by root 2 so you have 1 by root 2 cos 45 is also 1 by root 2 so 1 by root 2 so root 2 comes on top minus tan a tan 45 is 1 tan 45 is 1 so you get 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0 so again you get a 0 here so answer is option a uh, again a very simple problem the number of revolutions made by a circular wheel of radius so this is a circular wheel radius is 0.7 meters in rolling a distance of 176 meters so if the wheel rolls once the distance traveled is 2 pi r which is equal to the circumference right so if this wheel will roll once the, the distance traveled will be 2 pi r so it's going to be 2 into pi which is 22 by 7 into r which is 0.7 all right so now we need to find out how many revolutions does it make if it travels a distance of 176 meters okay so now x into the distance traveled by the wheel in doing one revolution is 2 into 22 by 7 into 0.7 so this is number of revolutions so that is equal to 176 so what is x equal to 
176 into 7 divided by 2 into 22 into 0.7. So now this can be written as 176 into 7 divided by 2 into 22 into this 0.7 can be written as 7 by 10. So 7, 7 gets cancelled. So 288s are 22 4s are. So 4 into 10 gives me 40. So the answer is 40 revolutions, which is option D. Triangle ABC is such that, so let me draw triangle ABC. AB is 3 centimeters, BC is 2 centimeters, CA is 2.5 centimeters. And given that you have another triangle DEF, where these two triangles are similar and EF, EF is 4. So now we need to find the parameter of the triangle DEF. Right? So since these two triangles are similar, I find that BC by EF equals 2 by 4, which is equal to 1 is to 2. Right? So the sides are in the ratio 1 is to 2. So if the side is 2 here, here it's going to be a double. double. 2 into 2 which gives me 4. So 2.5 here this is going to be 2 into 2.5 which is 5. 3 here this is going to be 3 into 2 which is 6. So therefore the perimeter is 6 plus 4 plus 5 which gives me 15. So therefore the right option is option B. Again a very simple problem. 17th one a figure is given A, B, C and D, E. DE is parallel to BC given. Now AD is 3, BD is 4 and BC is 14. Then what is DE equal to? Right? So we know that these two triangles are similar because you have a common angle. These two lines are parallel to each other. right? So angle ADE will be equal to angle ABC. Right? And A is a common angle. So therefore, we find that the triangle ADE will be similar to triangle ABC. All right. So now AD by AB will be equal to DE by BC. Now what is AD? AD is 3. AB is 3 plus 4, which is 7, equals DE by 14. 2 is a. So DE is equal to 3 into 2, which is 6. And the right option is option B. 18th one. 4 tan beta equals 3. So what is tan beta? Tan beta is 3 by 4. So I need to find what is 4 sin beta minus 3 cos beta divided by 4 sin beta plus 3 cos beta. So tan beta is 3 by 4. Consider a right angle triangle. Right? So ABC, if this is angle beta, opposite side is 3, adjacent side is 4. And what is the hypotenuse? We know that 3, 4, 5 are Pythagorean triplets. So this is 5. So now let me write all the values here. 4 into what is sine beta? Opposite side by hypotenuse, 3 by 5. Minus 3 into cos is 4 by 5 divided by 4 into 3 by 5 plus 3 into 4 by 5. So here what do, what do we get? 4 into 3 is 12 by 5 minus 12 by 5 divided by so here you have again 12 by 5 plus 12 by 5 24 by 5. Anyway numerator is 0 so the answer is going to be 0 here. So the option is option A. So question 19, one equation of a pair of dependent linear equation that is 5x plus 7y equals 2. Then the second equation would be. Now the second equation also will be a multiple of the first equation because the pair of equation is dependent on this. So here I find that you get you have 10x, 14y in the answer. So let me multiply this by 2. So I get minus 10x plus 14y equals 4. All right. So observe the options. Option A is not correct. Option B is not correct. Option C 
well option c if i take 4 to the other side i get minus 4 so option c is also not correct then it has to be option d how do i get the answer take minus sign throughout so i get 10x minus 14y equals minus 4 so this corresponds to option d here next a letter of english alphabets are chosen at a random what is the probability that it is a letter of the word mathematics so you have mathematics find the number of letters which are present in this word so you have a then you have c then you have e i m t h s so how many letters are there one two three four five six seven eight so there are eight letters so question 20 a letter of english alphabets is chosen at random what is the probability that it is a letter of the word mathematics so if i list out all the alphabets present in this word mathematics it's going to be a c e i m t h s which is eight so what is the probability that a letter chosen so a letter for this event e chosen belongs to mathematics it's going to be 8 by 26 so it's going to be 4 by 13 so the right option is option a again a very simple problem so this completes section a where we have solved all the 21 mark problems so out of these 20 only 16 would be considered right so i hope you've gone through all the 20 uh, one mark problems of section a so next we'll begin with section b and solve the 20 problems of section B and also of section C. So let's begin with section B. So again you have 20 questions of one mark each and any 16 have to be attempted. So the 21st question is a tricky one. If the sum of two numbers is 1, 2, 1, 5 and their HCF is 81. So the HCF is 81. And the sum of those two numbers is 1 to 1, 5, right? So let the two numbers be x and y. And the sum of two numbers is 1 to 1, 5. So x plus y is 1 to 1, 5 here. And we know that the HCF is 81. That means the first number is nothing but 81 into another factor A. Whereas the second number is again 81 into another factor B because the highest common factor is 81 and you have A and B, two different numbers which may be multiplied with 81. And we know that A and B are co-primes. So A and B, the only number which divides A and B should be one here. So now we know that 81A plus 81B is equal to 1 to 1, 5. So take 81 common, A plus B equals 1, 2, 1, 5. So 81, 15 is up. So A plus B equals 15. So how many possibilities are there? So how many possible numbers are there? So we need to identify that. It depends on A and B. So now A plus B is 15. So A can be 1, B can be 14. 2, 13, 3, 12, 4, 11. So we'll see which of these pairs are valid. And then 5, 10, 6, 9, 7, 8. And then you have, so these are the numbers there. So to be very specific, you have seven values of A and B. So among these, the two numbers have to be co-prime. So of course 1 and 14, the only factor which divides 1 and 14 is 1, 2 and 13 because 2 and 13 are prime numbers, 3 and 12 no because you have 3 which divides both of them, 4 and 11 yes because 11 is a prime number, 5 and 10 not possible, 6 and 9 not possible and 7 and 8 of course because 7 happens to be a prime number. Okay, so how many possible pairs of numbers are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. These are not the numbers. The numbers would be 81 into 1, 81 into 14. The next number would be 81 into 2, 81 into 13. They have not asked the numbers, but they have asked how many such pairs are possible. So four such pairs are possible and the right option is option C. 
it's a very tricky one the 22nd one is the easiest one so you just have to see the graph there so there is the xy axis which has been given and there is a graph there are two lines which intersect each other at point c and they intersect here this is point c this is a and this is d so we need to find the area formed by the two lines and the line x equal to zero right so the lines a b so this is a b so this is the line a b and this is the line the other line here c d and these two lines intersect at this point and x equal to zero what is x equal to zero the y axis is x equal to zero so this is x equal to zero so i need to find this area so this is let's say point d and this is point a from the figure it looks like these are the points so this is d and this is a and here you have c here so d is minus 2 the y value is minus 2 so x value is 0 so it's going to be 0 comma minus 2 a value is going to be 4 so it is 0 comma 4 and the c value is x is 2 y is 2 we know that the area of a triangle is half into base into height right so if i consider ad to be the base so ad is the base so it's going to be 4 up and 2 down so half into base length is 6 and what about the height this is 2 here so you have 3 into 2 which is 6 so the answer is 6 square units so therefore it is option c a very easy problem 23rd one if tan alpha plus cot alpha equals 2 then what is tan 20 power alpha plus cot 20 power alpha okay so now tan of alpha plus cot of alpha is equal to 2 we know that tan 45 is 1 tan 45 degrees and similarly cot 45 degrees is also 1 so if alpha equals 45 i get 1 plus 1 equals 2 so therefore alpha is equal to 45 degrees so next what do we have tan 20 45 degrees alpha is 45 right plus cot of 45 degrees to power 20 what is this equal to tan 45 is 1 so i get 1 power 20 plus cot 45 is 1 1 power 20 so this is going to be 2 again a very easy problem option b 24th one 217x plus 131y equals 913 131y plus 217 y equals 827 find x plus y now here you observe that the coefficient of x is 217 and here the coefficient of y is 217 so these two values are the same similarly these two values are the same so if x plus y has been asked right so if x plus y has been asked the easiest way is instead of going in for elimination or substitution which can be done which will take a lot of time just add these two equations so when you add these two equations 217 plus 131 is 348x similarly here also 131 plus 217 so again you get 348y and when you add these two you get 1740 take 348 common so you get x plus y equals 1740 right so you observe that 348 into 5 is 1740 so x plus y is equal to 5 so option a now similarly if they had asked x minus y just subtract these two and you will get x minus y a very easy problem 25 the LCM of two prime numbers P and Q where P is greater than Q is 221 so find 3P minus Q so since the LCM of two prime numbers so the LCM of two prime numbers P comma Q since these two are prime the LCM of P and Q will be P into Q itself so P into Q is 221 so we know that 221 
can be obtained by multiplying two prime numbers so 221 is 11 into 11 but p and q are different so this cannot be an option we also know that 221 is equal to 13 into 17 right so therefore p is the larger number so p is 17 and q is 13 so i need 3p minus q so it's going to be 3 into 17 minus q which is 30 so what is the answer here so the answer is going to be 51 minus 13 so you get the answer as 38 so again a very easy problem so 38 corresponds to option c 26th one a card is drawn from a well shuffled deck of cards what is the probability that the card drawn is neither a king or a queen so we know that there are four kings and four queens so out of 52 i eliminate four kings and four queens so it's going to be 52 minus 8 so we get it as 44 so therefore the probability of getting a card which is neither a king or a queen probability of the event is going to be 44 divided by 52 so that's going to be 11 by 13 so 11 by 13 so the option is option a very simple problem 27th one two fair dies are rolled simultaneously what is the probability that five will come up at least once so when two dies are rolled you have 36 combinations i hope you remember one one two six comma six so among these let us list out the pairs which at least have one five so you have the first row you have one comma five then you get two comma five then three comma five four comma five and then six comma five and then you have five comma one five comma two five three five four five five and five six so six here seven eight nine ten eleven here so therefore probability of the event is nothing but 11 by 36 so the option is option b 28th one one plus sine square alpha equals three sine alpha cos alpha then the values of cot alpha are so we need to find the value of cot now the easiest way is to convert this to cot so we know that i can convert this to cot if i divide this by sine square alpha and i can also divide this by sine square alpha so divide both the sides by sine square alpha so when i do that i get cosecant square alpha plus one equals one sine one sine gets cancelled three cot alpha so you have the identity one plus cot square alpha is cosecant square alpha so let me substitute that here so one plus cot square alpha plus one equals three cot alpha so i have cot square alpha take this to lhs minus three cot alpha plus two equals zero so this is a quadratic equation all right so now coefficient of cot square alpha is 1 so the product of the roots is going to be 2 and the sum of the roots is going to be minus 3 so i have minus 2 and minus 1 very simple so i have cot square alpha minus 2 cot alpha minus cot alpha plus 2 equals 0 so from these two you take cot alpha common so cot alpha into cot alpha minus 2 from these two you take minus one common minus one into cot alpha minus two equal to zero so i have cot alpha minus two cot alpha minus one equal zero so equate each of them to zero so i get cot alpha equals one or two so observe the right option is option c so the right option is c the vertices of the parallelogram in order are a one comma two b 4 comma y c x comma 6 d 3 comma 5 then we need to find x and y now since this is a parallelogram so i have the parallelogram a b c d we know that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other 
all right so therefore when if they do bisect each other then i have a and c and b and d and they bisect each other and the common point let it be o so the midpoint of a, is a and c would be 1 plus x by 2 comma 2 plus 6 by 2 and that should be equal to the midpoint of b and d 4 plus 3 by 2 is 7 by 2 plus y plus 5 by 2 it's comma right so now let me equate the x and the y so i have 1 plus x by 2 equals 7 by 2 2 2 gets cancelled so x equals 6 this is 8 by 2 is 4 equals y plus 5 by 2 so 2 i take it to this side so it becomes 8 minus 5 equals y so y equals 3 so the answer is 6 comma 3 so which corresponds to option a another simple problem problem 30 problem 30 in the given figure angle ACB is equal to angle CDA so ACB so this angle is equal to angle CDA so this angle so these two angles are equal and AD is 3 and AC is 8 centimeters so we need to find what is BD all right so now let me call this as an angle alpha 1 and let this be alpha 2 all right so now let me consider the two triangles let me consider triangle ABC and then triangle ADC now we need to prove that these two triangles are similar now I find that the two angles are equal right so alpha 1 equals alpha 2 given the two angles are given there and then I have a common side which is AC AC is common which happens to be the common side and apart from that I have a angle A which is also common angle A is also common hence triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADC all right so now I have AB so AB is the side opposite to alpha 1 and AC is the side opposite to alpha 2 which are equal so AB by AC is equal to now let me consider the sides which are opposite to angle A BC by CD and then the remaining side so you finished AB BC it's going to be CA divided by so here we have finished with AC then CD divided by AD so now I need to find now what is AB AB is AD plus BD right so this is going to be AD so AB is AD plus BD divided by AC which is 8 all right so now what is AD AD is nothing but 3 so let me write 3 here so this is going to be 3 so 3 plus BD by 8 is now equal to let me consider this one AC AC is 8 divided by AD is 3 so you have 8 into 8 so this becomes 3 into 3 plus BD equals 64 so I have 3 BD plus 9 equals 64 so now what happens 64 minus 9 so I have 3 times BD equals 64 minus 9 which gives me 55 and what is BD BD is 55 by 3 centimeters so if you check all the options it is option C so this again is a very simple problem the option is C the equation of the perpendicular bisector of line joining the points so you have point a which is 4 comma 5 and another point b which is minus 2 comma 3 is so what does this mean so you have a line a b a b is a line we need to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector so i need to find 
a line which is perpendicular to AB and at the same time bisects AB. So now let this point be point C. So since this bisects AB, what is the point of C? Point C is 4 minus 2 by 2 which is 2 by 2 which is 1. 5 plus 3 by 2 which is 8 by 2 which is 4. Point C is 1 comma 4. So now let me call this as D. I need to find the line CD. Now this line CD definitely passes through the point C 1 comma 4. Now of course you can find the value or you can find the uh, line CD which is a bit complicated because you do not know the formula of finding the line directly. Right? So you can consider AD and BD where AD is equal to BD. But an easier way is since the given line passes through 1 comma 4, check the four options. Put the value of x and y in these four options and check if LHS equals RHS. In the first case, you have 2x 2 into 1 minus y is 4 plus 7 equals 0. Is it equal to 0? No. So you have 2 minus 4 is minus 2 plus 7 not equal to 0. So option A is wrong. Option B 3x 3 plus 2 into y 8 minus 7 is definitely not equal to 0. Option C 3 into x is 1 minus y 4 minus 7 is definitely not equal to 0. So let's come to D. 3x is 3 into 1 plus y is 4 minus 7 equals 0. So 7 minus 7 equals 0. So definitely D is the right answer. So without calculating the value, without finding the line itself, we have come to the conclusion that D is the right answer. Okay, But you can also calculate by finding the distance between A and D and B and D. So we can do that. So I'll just give you a hint. So let the point D have the coordinates x comma y. So AD is equal to BD. So we have the distance formula which is x minus 4 the whole square plus y minus 5 the whole square the whole root is equal to x minus of minus 2 is plus 2 the whole square plus y minus 3 the whole square the whole root. So square on both the sides and apply the formula you get x square minus 8x plus 16 plus y square minus 10y plus 25. This is equal to x square plus 4x plus 4 plus y square minus 6x 6y plus 9. Alright, so now x square x square gets cancelled, y square y square gets cancelled. Alright, so you have minus 8x plus 4x. Bring this 4x here, so you get minus 12x minus 10y minus 6y bring this minus 6y here so this becomes minus 4y and then here you have 16 plus 25 so you have 16 plus 25 and if i bring these two to the other side it becomes minus 9 plus 4 which is 13 minus 30. so essentially it is going to be 25 plus 3 which is going to be 28 so therefore you have plus 28 equal to 0. So divide the entire equation by 4 with a negative sign. So divide the whole equation by 1 by minus 4. So what do I get? You get 3x plus y minus 7 equal to 0. So 3x plus y minus 7 equal to 0 corresponds to option D. But we have already figured out that D is the right answer. Given D is the midpoint of BC, so D is the midpoint of BC and we need to find cot of angle Y divided by cot of angle X. So this is X and this whole thing is Y. D is the midpoint, isn't it? So therefore CD equals BD equals half BC or CB. So let us find what is cot Y. So what is cot y? Cot y by cot x is what I need. So I need to find cot y by cot x. So what is cot y? Cot is adjacent side by opposite side. Adjacent side 
is AC by opposite side. So it is BC, right? So BC divided by cot X. Cot X is adjacent side AC by the opposite side CD. So AC, AC gets cancelled. And we know that CD is nothing but twice BC. So I have, so this is nothing but CD by BC. All right. So what is CD? CD is 1 by 2 BC divided by BC. BC, BC gets cancelled. So the answer is 1 by 2 and that corresponds to option B. A very easy problem. 33 again is a very simple problem. Which is the smallest number by which 1 by 13 should be multiplied so that the decimal expansion terminates after two decimal places. So two decimal places meaning I should have 100 in the denominator. So if I multiply it by 13 by 100, so definitely it will terminate after two decimal places. So it's going to be 13 by 100. So it is option A. You can try out all the four options, check and then you will get the answer as A itself. Next, 34th one, there is a right angle triangle A, F, B, E. Now the sides A, B and B, E of a right angle triangle, right angled at B, so this is 90 degrees, are of length 16 and 8. So this length is 16 and this length is of length 8 respectively. The length of the side of the largest square. So inside you have a square which has been inscribed. So I have a square. So square meaning all the sides are equal. So I have a square which has been inscribed which is F, B here, this is G and this is D. So let the length of the side of the square be X. So if this is x, this value GE is going to be 8 minus x. Alright, so now we need to find the side. So I need to know what is x. Right, so now in order to find the value of x, let us consider the triangle ABC and let me consider the triangle DGE because that's the easiest. So consider triangle ABC and triangle DGE. Now I find that angle E is common. So angle E is common. And then which is the other angle? This also is 90 degrees because I have a square here and this is perpendicular to BE. So angle G is equal to angle B which is equal to 90 degrees. So two angles are equal. So these two are similar. So now if they are similar, what can be done? So I have AB by dg so ab by dg must be equal to be by ge now what is ab ab is 16 by dg is x equals what is be b is 8 and here i have ge g is 8 minus x so this is going to be 8 minus x Right, so 8 twos are, so 2 into this, so 2 into 8 is 16 minus 2x equals x, right, so take x to the other side, so you get 16 equals 3x, so x is 16 by 3. So check out all the options, it corresponds to option B. A very simple problem. 35, a point P divides the line joining the points r minus 1 comma 3 and s which is 9 comma 8 in the ratio k is to 1 so this is point p it divides it in the ratio k is to 1 and if p and if this point p lies on the line so if the line is x minus y plus 2 equal to 0 then the value of k is so we know that the point p divides these two points the ratio k is to 1 Right. So what is point P? P is K into 9 plus 1 into minus 1. So it is minus 1 divided by K plus 1. So this is point P 
the x value comma k into 8 so it is k8 plus 1 into 3 divided by k plus 1 so this is the y value now this is the x value this is the y value now this point p lies on this line x minus y plus 2 so substitute the values there so x is nothing but 9k minus 1 divided by k plus 1 minus y is 8k plus 3 divided by k plus 1 plus 2 equals 0. If I multiply the whole equation by k plus 2, what happens? 2 gets multiplied with k plus 1 equals 0 and this gets eliminated. So here I have 9k minus 1. So do not forget to put the brackets here minus 8k minus 3 plus 2k plus 2 equals 0. Right? So you have k plus 2 is 3k and then you have minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2 equals 0. So 3k equals 2 or what is k? 2 by 3. So check out the four options. It is A. Question 36. Given below is a square. So there is a square A, B, C, D. And the side of the square is 14 centimeters and we need to find the area of the shaded portion. So this is the shaded portion. So the area of the shaded portion has to be obtained. So observe that this is H, F, E and G. So this is the shaded portion. Now if this side is 14, then half the length is 7. So therefore this becomes a semicircle. So HEF becomes a semicircle of radius equal to 7. Now what is the area of the semicircle? So area of the semicircle is pi r square by 2. So it's going to be pi is 22 by 7 into r square. r is 7 into 7 by 2. So 7, 7 gets cancelled. So this is 11, 11 into 7 is 77 centimeters square. Now here if you observe D, H, F, C, this is a rectangle. This is 7 and this length is 14. So to find the area of the shaded portion, it is the area of the rectangle minus area of the semicircle. So this is quarter circle and this is quarter circle, right? So find the area so area of rectangle d h f c is 14 into 7 and that is equal to 98 centimeter square and from this i have to subtract the area of the semicircle which is 77 so therefore the area of the shaded portion h f g this shaded portion is 98 minus 77 so that gives me 21 centimeters square so what is the total area of the shaded portion the semicircle here plus this shaded portion so the area of the shaded portion is 77 plus 21 so that gives me 98 centimeters square so this corresponds to option c 37 is actually an interesting problem it is not tricky it's easy now there are rings like this right so there are five links the or olympic rings and we need to find the area of the shaded portion so you have five congruent circles each of radius one centimeter so the radius is one centimeter so if i consider this circle the radius is one so here the radius is one and we need to find the area of the shaded portion so like this there are four regions so like this, there are four regions here. Now let me consider, so let me consider this ABC triangle. So ABC, so this is A, this is B, this is C, and then you have the region here. So ABC is a sector. So what is the area of the sector? Area of the sector is theta by 360 degrees into pi r square. So since there's an equilateral triangle, with radius so this is one this is one this angle will be 60 degrees so the total area of the sector of each sector is 60 by 360 into 
pi into 1 so it's going to be pi by 6 so it's going to be pi by 6 here centimeter square so this is area of the entire sector right so now from this sector I have to subtract the area of the triangle because I need the area of this region only so what is the area of the equal the triangle ABC so now the area of the triangle ABC here if you remember the formula would be R square by 2 into sine theta so it's going to be 1 by 2 sine theta so you have sine 60 degrees so we know that what is sine 60 sine 60 is root 3 by 2 so you have sine 60 which is root 3 by 2 into 2 which is going to be root 3 by 4 so area of this one region is going to be pi by 6 minus root 3 by 4 so how many such regions do you have so let's consider all the circles right so you have region 1 so this is region 1 and this is region 2 so this is region 1 and this is region 2 now this is going to be region 3 and 4 here region 5 6 7 8 and they are all equal so the total area would be 8 into pi by 6 minus root 3 by 4 centimeter square so if you observe the option is option D it's actually a simple problem but has been presented in such a way that it looks complicated two and half are zeros of P x square plus 5 x plus R so therefore you have two and half they are zeros right so put the value of two and half in place of x so you have if I put x equal to 2 I get 4p plus 10 plus r equal to 0 and if we put x equal to half I get p by 4 plus 5 by 2 plus r equal to 0 so I need to find the value of p and r so now subtract these two so r and r gets cancelled so here you have p into 4 minus 1 by 4 plus 10 minus 5 by 2 equal to 0 so you have p into so this is 15 by 4 plus 20 minus 5 is again 15 by 2 equal to 0 so you have p equals if I take this to the other side it becomes minus 15 by 2 divided by 15 by 4 so 4 goes on top 15 15 gets cancelled so I get the value of p as minus 2 all right so once p is minus 2 just substitute the value here so p is minus 2 so you get 4 into minus 2 is minus 8 plus 10 plus r equals 0 so this is 2 plus r equals 0 r equals minus 2 so p is minus 2 r equals minus 2 so the option is b again a very simple problem 39th one the circumference of the circle is 100 centimeters so you have a circle the circumference is 100 and we need to find the side of the square which has been inscribed in this right so now let this be a b c d now let me join the diagonal ac so the diagonal ac will definitely pass through the center of the circle now we know that the circumference 2 pi r equals 100 and 2 r equals 100 by pi so this happens to be the diagonal which is equal to ac now let this be x and let this be x so we know that the diagonal ac is equal to root of x square plus x square using pythagoras theorem so it's going to be x root 2 all right so now we know that ac which is equal to x root 2 is nothing but equal to 100 by pi so x root 2 equals 100 by pi what is x x is 100 by root 2 into 1 by pi so observe the options here now none of the options match 
so you have 100 by pi which is option b which is not true 100 into root 2 by pi which is not true and i have 50 here so what do i do let me multiply and divide by root 2 so if i multiply by root 2 i get 100 into root 2 if i divide by root 2 so it is root 2 into root 2 into pi so this becomes 2 so 100 by 2 is 50 so i get 50 root 2 by pi so what is the option the option is c next 40 the number of solutions of 3 power x plus y equals 243 and 243 power x minus y equals 3 is so we know that 3 power x plus y and what is 243 243 is 3 power 5 right so x plus y equals 5 that is equating the powers now similarly here we have 3 power 5 into x minus y equals 3 power 1 so 5x minus 5y equals 1 here again equating the powers all right so now let me take the coefficients of these two equations so coefficient of x is 1 here this is 5 here so a1 by a2 and b1 by b2 let me consider a1 is 1 a2 is 5 b1 is 1 b2 is minus 5 so a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 so therefore you have a unique solution so the number of solution is 1 so which corresponds to option b so this completes section b so section a we have completed all the 20 problems you need to answer 16 section b again 20 problems you need to answer 16 and section c you have two cases and then you have 10 questions among these 10 questions you need to answer it so let's see what those two case studies are so question 41 to 45 are based on the first case study so it's been given that Annie was standing on a driving board which is 48 feet above the water level so this is <coughs> <coughs> this is the water level so the water level is at the ground level so the height here is 0 and this is 48 feet and she jumps so it follows a parabolic path and you have a polynomial h of t which is equal to minus 16 t square plus 8 t plus k now what is the value of k question 41 to find the value of k put t equal to 0 so assuming that initially Annie is standing here okay so at time t equal to 0 she has not yet jumped from the diving board so t equal to 0 put t equal to 0 in this equation so we get 48 so the height is 48 at t equal to 0 the height is 48 equals 0 plus 0 plus k so k equals 48 and the answer is c next 42 at what time will she touch the pool water so when will she touch the water in the pool so when height becomes equal to 0 so this should be 0 so 0 equals minus 16 t square plus 8 t plus so we know the value of k which is 48 right so divide the entire equation by 8 so you get minus 2 t square plus t plus 6 equals 0 or I can write it as 2 t square minus t minus 6 equals 0 so 2 into minus 6 so the product is going to be minus 12 the sum is going to be minus 1 so when is the product minus 12 and sum minus 1 when I have minus 4 and plus 3 here so I have 2t square minus 4t plus 3t minus 6 equals 0. Take 2t common t minus 2 plus 3 common t minus 2 equal to 0. So I have t minus 2 and 2t plus 3 equals 0. So equate each of them to 0. So t equals 2 or t equals minus 3 by 2. So the time cannot be negative. So t equals 2 seconds. So the answer is option B. So 43, so Rita's height and feet above the water level is given by another polynomial with the zeros minus 1 and 
plus 2. So what is P of t? So we know that P of t is nothing but so I may have a constant k. So instead of x I have t. So t squared minus so we know that you have sum of roots into t plus product of the roots if the roots are alpha and beta. Right. So this is P of t here. So I have k t square minus sum of roots. So that's going to be 2 minus 1 into t plus 2 into minus 1. So we get k into t square minus t minus 2. So observe all the four operation, all the four uh, answers. Now the first two are not correct. The second one I have 24. So if I take 24 here, I get 24 t square minus 24 t and option C is plus 48 but here I have minus 48. So if I consider minus 24, I would get t square minus t minus 2. Right? So therefore P of t is equal to this equation and this corresponds to option D. 44th one again is similar. Again the zeros are 1 and minus 6. The sum of zeros. So the sum is 1 and the product is minus 6. So again we have P of t equals k into t square minus. So the sum is 1 here. So 1 into t and the product is minus 6. Minus 6. So observe the first one is incorrect. The second one is also incorrect and I have 8. So either it's going to be k is going to be plus 8 or minus 8. So if I observe, if I put k equal to minus 8, I have t square minus t minus 6 or I would get it as minus 8t square plus 8t and then plus 48 and this corresponds to option C. So again a very simple problem. 45, the zeros of the polynomial are of t which is minus 12t square plus k minus 3t plus 48 are negative of each other. That means the zeros, so if the roots are alpha and beta, they both are negative which essentially means that beta equals minus alpha. And we know that the sum of roots alpha plus beta equals minus b by a. So minus b, b is the coefficient of t and a is the coefficient of t square. And what is beta here? So beta is minus alpha. So alpha minus alpha which is 0 equals minus b. What is minus b? Minus of k minus 3 by minus 12. So minus minus gets cancelled. So I have k minus 3 by 12 equals 0. Right. So when you have k minus 3 by 12 equal to 0 essentially means that the numerator is equal to 0. So k minus 3 equals 0 or k equals 3. So the right answer is option A. Now the case study 2 questions 46 to 50. So it's a very simple case study. So you basically don't have to read the entire description which has been given. Now what we shall do is you have the different points A, B, E, F, K, H, I, J, etc, etc. So let me write down the coordinates of all these points. So A, the coordinate of A is, so observe the X is 3 and Y, the height is 6. What about B? B is 4, comma 3. And I have C. C is nothing but the x distance is 4 and the y distance is minus 1. So it's 4 comma minus 1. And then d is x distance is 3, y is minus 4. e is x is 2, y is 1. f, f is x is 1, y is 5. I have i, i is minus 1 and 1, j, the x value is minus 2 and the y value is also minus 2, k is x is minus 4, y is 1 
and then I have one more h. h is x is minus 2 and y is 4. And then again I have another point O. O is x is 5, y is 1. So these are all the points which have been given. So it's actually very convenient if I can write down all the coordinate values of these points A, B, C, D, etc. Now problem question 46, we need to find the coordinates of the centroid of the triangle E, H, J. So if E, H and J, they form a triangle, I need to find the centroid. Now we know that the formula of the centroid is x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3, y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3, where the coordinates of E is x1, y1, h is x2, y2, j is x3, y3. So let me consider. So let's find out the x value. So x value of E is 2 and h is minus 2, j is again minus 2 by 3. And then the y value of E is 1, h is 4 and j is minus 2 by 3. So 2 and minus 2 get cancelled. So I get minus 2 by 3. So this is 5 minus 2, which is 3 by 3, which is 1. So the centroid is minus 2 by 3, comma 1. So the option is option A. 47. If a player P needs to be at equal distance from A and G, so you have point A, the coordinates are 3, comma 6, and you also have point G. So what is G? G is 1, comma, minus 3. All right. So he is at P and he has to be at equal distance. Equal distance means P is the midpoint of A and G. So use midpoint formula. So what is P? X1 plus X2 by 2, 3 plus 1 by 2, 4 by 2. And Y1 plus Y2 by 2, 6 minus 3 by 2, that is plus 3 by 2. So you get the value of P as 2 comma 3 by 2, which corresponds to C. A point on X axis equidistant from I and E is. So let me consider a point on the X axis. So any point on the X axis will have the coordinate values X comma 0. At this point is equidistant from I. So let's say you have I here. The coordinate is minus 1 comma 1, not to scale. And then you have another point E, which is 2 comma 1. So equidistant. So this distance is equal to this distance. Right? So now I need to find this point X. Use distance formula. Right? So we know that X distance formula x minus of minus 1. So x plus 1 the whole square plus 0 minus 1 that is minus 1 whole square is equal to x minus 2 the whole square plus minus 1 the whole square the whole root. So I take squares on both the sides and I expand this. So x plus 1 the whole square is x square plus 2x plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 square is 1 equals x square minus 4x plus 4 plus 1. So x square, x square gets cancelled. I bring this minus 4 here to this side, it becomes 6x. And this is plus 2 goes to the other side. So this is 5 minus 2. So 6x equals 3. So x is equal to 6 by... x is equal to 3 by 6, which gives me 1 by 2. So the value of x is 1 by 2. So what is this point? This point is 1 by 2 comma 0. So observe all the four options. It is option A. We have the two points K and E. So coordinate of K is minus 4 comma 1. E is 2 comma 1. And then I have a point Q such that his distance from K is twice his distance from E. So his distance from K is 2 times his distance from E. So the ratio is 2 is to 1 and I need to find Q. So very easy. So what is Q? 2 into the X value which is 2 here plus 1 into X value here which is minus 4 divided by 2 plus 1 3. 2 into 1 which is 2 plus 1 into 1 is 1 divided by 3. So you get 4 minus 4 by 3 which is 0. 3 by 3 is 1. So 0 comma 1 is the value of the coordinate value of Q. So the option is 
B. So problem 50, you have the y-axis, so let the point be 0, y, and this point is equidistant from B and C. So B is 4, comma 3, and C is 4, comma minus 1. Again, use distance formula and equate them, equate these two. So 4 minus 0, the whole square, plus 3 minus y, the whole square, the whole root, equals 4 minus 0, the whole square is 4 square, and then you have minus 1 minus y the whole square or I can just write it as y plus 1 the whole square the whole root. So you have 4 square is 16 plus y square minus 6y plus 9 equals 16 plus y square plus 2y plus 1. So y square, y square gets cancelled. So you have 16 here, 16 here gets cancelled and then you have 6y, let me take 6y to the other side, so it becomes 6y plus 2y is 8y. I bring this 1 to this side, so it becomes 9 minus 1 equals 8. So y equals 8 by 8, which is 1. So the coordinate point is 0, comma 1. So observe all the four options, it is option D. So with this, we have completed the entire standard paper, all the 50 questions. So if you observe all the 50 questions, most of the questions are simple, but there are a few questions, approximately about 10 to 12 questions, which are a bit challenging. Unless you know all the formulas, you know all the concepts, you may find it a bit hard to solve those problems. But at the same time, you have an exemption of four questions in section A, four questions in section B, and two questions in section C. So make sure that you do your preparations correctly and I'm sure you'll be able to score very well and do very well in your first semester examination. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notifications of all the further uploads and thanks for watching.